Okay, so this video is a continuation of the intro to graph theory. And it was kind of fun in the last one to start off with a puzzle and solve that or answer that puzzle at the end. I think I'll do that again. So this is another uh, classic from graph theory where you have these three houses. And also pictured are three utilities. This could be gas and water and electric, perhaps. And we want to connect each of these three houses to these three different utilities. And let's say we just don't want to cross the lines. So we could start with this house and just directly connect to the gas, to water, and to the electricity. OK, that's fine. Let's move to the other house. Well, if I'm going to connect without crossing the lines, I guess I'll run around like that and uh, maybe run this line parallel. It doesn't touch. OK, there, doesn't touch. And uh, OK, that seems to be working fine. So let's just do that again. And we'll cut, connect that house that way. And now this one, I need to connect to all three utilities. So it's starting to be a bit of a challenge here. Maybe you can go like this. All right, there's the gas hooked up. Hmm. Well, so this is the puzzle. Is there a way maybe I could have been more clever about how I drew these uh, connections? Maybe we could find a way to connect each house with each of the three utilities and just not cross any of the lines. So that's the challenge. Think about that, and I'll uh, answer that puzzle at the end. So in the previous video, I introduced a definition that's right here for planar graph. A planar graph, that's a graph that can be drawn in a two-dimensional plane without crossing any edges. So that's exactly what we're looking for in this three utilities puzzle, looking whether or not we can create a planar graph. Basically, this is just a set of three vertices that are in one group that we could call like group V and a set of three vertices in another set that we could call W. We're trying to connect each vertex in set V to all of the vertices in set W, but we have we don't need to connect any of the vertices in set V with each other. We don't need to connect any of the vertices in set W together. Just every vertex in V connected to every vertex in W. So that's something actually already defined. What we're talking about is a complete bipartite graph on MN vertices, which we could denote as K sub MN. In this case, M and N are both three. A complete bipartite graph on MN vertices is a simple graph that is a graph with no loops or parallel edges whose vertices are divided into two distinct subsets. The first set V with M vertices and the second subset W with N vertices in such a way that the following are true. Every vertex is either in V and or in W, but not both. There's exactly one edge from each vertex of V to each vertex of W. There are no edges connecting the vertices in V, and there are no edges con connecting the vertices in W. So I can just draw that graph right now, connecting every vertex in V to every vertex in W. Uh, of course, I crossed edges there, but maybe it's possible to draw this in some other way uh, without crossing the edges. OK, well, before we go further, let's just count uh, how many vertices do we have? How many vertices are there? Of course, there are six separated into two groups of three. And how many edges are there? Well, each vertex, the way I drew it, I started with V. And so each of the three vertices, I drew three, vertice, uh, three edges. So that's three times three. There are actually nine edges. In fact, we could just extend based on the definition that K sub MN has M times N ver uh, edges. 
because you're just taking each vertex in the first set, and there are m of them, and connecting it to the n vertices in the other set, let's say w, so you just multiply m times n, and that's a formula for the number of edges. Another thing that we could compute here is the total degree. It's always 2 times the number of edges, which is 2 times 9 in this case. So there's 18 is the sum, which always is going to be an even number because you're always multiplying the number of edges. Every edge has two endpoints, and so double that for the total degree. And of course, we could also recognize that it had to be 18 because there are six vertices each of them has degree 3. And 6 times 3, that gives me 18 also. Well, just so I can delay giving the answer to the utility puzzle a little bit longer, let me just switch to a different graph. It's uh, K5, which is the complete graph on five vertices. What was that? What's a complete graph? A complete graph is a simple graph with exactly one edge connecting each pair of distinct vertices. So if we had five vertices, so I'll draw it this way for the first time. I want to connect each distinct pair, but no loops and no parallel edges. So one edge connecting each pair of vertices. I can start out like this, but I obviously still have some vertices that aren't connected, like these guys and these. Well, then, of course, also these. Yeah, OK. So. There's K5, so how many edges? It should be 10 edges. Of course, we could just go through and count them. Let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Or we could do it this way. We could do the calculation by saying that there were five vertices that have to connect to four other vertices. But if you went through and did that on all five vertices, you'd be counting everything twice. So just divide it by 2. And that gives me 10. In fact, you could just make that a general formula. For example, if you had k12, 12 vertices, how many edges would that be? You just do 12 times 11 divided by 2. So that's 66 edges. So the general principle that I'm following here is for k sub n, there would be n vertices, each connecting to all of the other vertices, which would be n minus 1 vertices. And if you did that for every single of the n vertices, you'd be double counting, so you divide by 2. So that's a formula in general for the number of edges in the complete graph with n vertices. How about k4? Four? 4 vertices. 4 times 3 over 2, that's 6 edges. Yeah, that makes sense. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Well, I think I said this already in, in part 1 of this introduction, but k4 is planar and k5 isn't. One way to draw k4 without crossing edges would be to just have one of these edges go around the outside like that. But here's another way to draw K4. There are four vertices and there are six edges. Each vertex actually has degree 3, so that's 3 times 4 or 12 for the total sum, or you could just say 2 times the number of edges. And K5 is just not planar. There isn't any way to draw it without intersecting edges. And these are the two graphs with the sort of smallest graphs, the graphs with the fewest number of vertices that are not planar graphs. And a really amazing theorem here in graph theory is that every graph that's not planar is not planar if and only if it contains one of these as a subgraph either K5 or K33. Those are the two graphs that sort of make uh, the planar embedding impossible, make it impossible to draw in the plane. If, it's, if it contains one of these two, it can't be drawn in the plane. And that's it. Those are the only ones.
any other graph that's not planar is not planar because it contains within it a subgraph that's one of these two. It's pretty amazing. This theorem is not even in our book. This is just off Wikipedia, planar graph. Um, and these two graphs here, they are planar, and these two non-planar. This graph does have five vertices, but it's not the complete graph on five vertices. Notice, for example, these two vertices at the bottom and these at the top, they're not connected. We don't have this corner here or this, this vertex connected to that one up there. So this thing that's called the butterfly graph here, it is planar and so is K4, but K5 and K33, they are non-planar. And it comes down to this Kuratowski's or Wagner's theorem. And Kuratowski's theorem says a finite graph is planar if and only if it does not contain a subgraph that's a subdivision of the complete graph K5 or the complete bipartite graph K33. So basically, these graphs that we've been looking at, finite graphs, they will be planar if and only if they do not contain K5 or K3 within them. So pretty amazing. These two graphs are sort of fundamental to this topic of whether a graph is planar or not. And that just, for my purpose here, just sort of introducing sort of some of the basic language and some interesting kind of topics within graph theory. And so there you have it. That utility puzzle is impossible to draw in the plane. I'll link to some other videos that are really fascinating about how actually it is possible to do this like on a on a coffee cup that has a handle or generally on a on some shape that can be transformed to a torus or well, basically a donut. But let's finish off. There were just a few other things that I thought I could do to help out with the homework. So I'll do those other examples now. All right, let's look at this uh, example here. Given any graph G, the total number of edges is 10. What's the total degree of the graph? We could always say that it's two times the number of edges to get the total degree. So two times 10, this would be 20. If the total degree of the graph is 10, then how many edges would it be? Well, it would be half of that, It'd be five, because you know that five times two, that would give you 10 for the total degree. Is it possible to construct a graph with four vertices that have degrees 1, 1, 2, and 3? And the answer is no, because you'll always have an even number of vertices that have odd degree. There must be an even number of vertices that have odd degree, and here we would have 1, 2, 3 vertices with odd degree. That's not possible. How about this one? So is it possible to construct a graph with four vertices of degrees 1, 1, 3, and 3? Oh, there's one other thing I could have said about this. Uh, part C. If you just add up the total sum, 1 plus 1, that's 2, plus 2 more, that's 4, plus 3, that's 7. So you could also say, another answer here, you could say no, because sum of degrees is odd. And the sum of all the degrees has to be even. So now we can look at number uh, part D. Is it possible to construct a graph with four vertices of degrees 1, 1, 3, and 3? Well, here I have an even number of odd vertices. And so, yeah, that's possible. And if you add it all up, it's 1 plus 1, that's 2, plus 3 more, that's 5, plus 3 more, that makes 8. That's an even number. So we have four vertices, so let's draw our four vertices. We have to have two of them with degree one, and the other two with de degree three, so I think maybe I'll just do it like this. I'll make the observation that it's not what's defined as a simple graph because it has a parallel edge, or it has, it has parallel edges. Let's do a couple more of these. How about, is it possible to have a graph with vertices of degree 1, 2, 3, and then 4? So that's four vertices, and the degrees are 1, and then 2, then 3, and 4. If it is possible, draw one. And if it's not possible, explain why. Well, first thing I'll look for is how many odd degree vertices are there. There are two. So yeah, that's an even number. It's possible. So let's draw that. 
So we'll need degree 1 somewhere. So let's make that have degree 1 starting right there. Then we'll need a degree 2. Okay, so this guy has degree 2. Now we're going to need a degree 3. So how about if I... Well, I can't make this go back because then that'll change that degree. So what I'll do now is just create a parallel edge. So I have a degree 3 here, and this actually has degree 2, and I want it to be degree 4. So to solve that without changing the answers for the degrees on the other ones, I'll just create a loop. So So yes, it is possible to have a graph that has degrees 1, 2, 3, and 4, but it wouldn't be possible to make a simple graph. And anytime you add in a loop, that will increase the degree by 2. So this last question here it says, is it possible to have a simple graph with vertices of degree 1, 2, 3, and 4? If yes, draw one. And if no, explain why it's not possible. So I'd say, in a simple graph, loops aren't allowed. And any graph with n vertices could have at most degree n minus 1. That is one less than the total number of vertices connecting that vertex to each of the other vertices unless it had a loop. Again, any graph with n vertices could have at most a degree of n minus 1. Thus, any graph with a degree equal to the number of vertices couldn't be simple because it would require a loop. So in this case, we have here a degree 4 vertex, and there are only four vertices. So there's no way you could make a simple graph here, uh, because it would, it would require a loop. Right? If you had a degree 4 and there were only four vertices, it can't be a simple graph. That is, no, it's not possible, because in a simple graph, every vertex must have a degree less than the number of vertices. And here we have four vertices, and that last vertex has degree 4. Or, let's say equivalently, if any vertex has a degree that's greater than or equal to the number of vertices, then the graph is not simple. And again, it's because that last one has degree 4, which is the number of vertices. Can't be simple. Okay, so I think I'll end the video here. I hope this has been interesting and helpful.